I was driving to the sawmill the other day to stock up on some more lumber for some future projects, you know, listening to some of my favorite tunes, and I decided I wanted to give myself a challenge. That challenge was to create an entire piece of furniture from just one board. And you're probably thinking, well, why did you make this challenge in the first place? Well, I really want all of my projects that I do here on my YouTube channel to be something that's easily approachable for everyone out there. And I know that my last project cost over a thousand dollars in epoxy, and I know that's a little bit ridiculous. So this specific project is geared toward all my budget conscious viewers. Now this is rough sawn lumber, which means after I got it all broken down into some more manageable pieces, you can tell that it's nowhere close to being flat. Now since I don't own a joiner, I'd use some hot glue to hold this board down to a sheet of melamine, and then use some shims just to make sure everything was nice and level. A couple passes through the planer, got that top side perfectly flat, and then I can flip it over and run it back through the planer again. And like I mentioned, I do not own a joiner, so I also needed a way to rip a nice, clean, straight edge on these boards. I've shown tons of different techniques in the past about how to accomplish this, like using your router table, but today I want to show you how to use a tape saw. There are no fancy jigs that are needed here, just take some double-sided tape and stick your board down to a sheet of plywood and then run it through the table saw. And while I do that, I want to remind you, as always, I do have PDF plans that'll walk you step by step through this project. Those plans are in full color, have detailed diagrams, have printable templates, and every dimension that you need to make this table for yourself. Oh, and I also have the SketchUp file, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. So now that I have all of the wood milled, I'm gonna make the leg, Nah, I don't want to make the legs. We're going to make the tabletop first. So I'm going to take this wood, I guess about two feet over to the table saw, and I'm going to rip another straight line on the other side, and I can glue all these panels up. With that panel glued up, I'll quickly mark the surface up with a pencil and then sand everything off to make sure that I get it nice and smooth and don't gouge the wood. And with that panel nice and smooth, you're probably wondering, what am I going to do about those knot holes? Well, after that last project where I used gallons and gallons of epoxy, I'm kind of over that. So I want to show you how to fill these knot holes with some Starbond CA glue. The trick with this stuff is to pour just a little bit of CA glue in the hole, spray it down with the activator to instantly cure the glue, and repeat those steps over and over again, slowly building up small layers until the knot hole is completely filled. Now your intuition is probably telling you just to fill the entire knot hole with the CA glue and then spray it with the activator, but I've tried that in the past and sometimes it just doesn't cure all the way through. Now, if you'd like to try this stuff for yourself, click that Starbond link down in the description below and use code SDC15 to save 15% off all of your orders. Oh, and that excess CA glue left on top of the surface, you just sand off real quickly. It's easy. Now that I've got the top panel glued up, the next thing that I need to do is cut it to its final shape. Now, since I modeled this thing in SketchUp on the computer, I was able to print off a full-size template of what it's supposed to look like. And if you do get the plans for this project, this is included with it as well. And because I don't have a massive oversized printer, this is basically just a couple sheets of paper that have been taped together, but now I can just cut it out. So after I kind of figure out where I want it to go on the blank, I'm gonna grab some of the spray adhesive and attach it to the wood. The key to using the spray adhesive is to actually let it tack up for about 20 seconds before you put the template onto the wood. And now that I've got that all stuck down to the wood, I'll let this glue set up for a minute or two and I can cut it out. Now I know what you're thinking, Eric, 
You just wasted a ton of walnut there. Why didn't you just glue it up into a more triangular shape from the beginning? Well, I could just make up an elaborate excuse, or I could just tell you the truth and it's that I was being lazy. Now with that rough shape cut out, I can trim the edges straight and then round off these corners. The fastest way I can think of is just using my track saw to cut straight that line. Don't have one of these fancy track saws? Well, try this. So pretty similar to how I showed you how to joint boards where you basically stick a piece of wood down to a scrap piece of plywood and run it through your table saw, I'm gonna do the exact same thing here, except this time I'm gonna line up the edge of this piece of plywood with the cut line. Then just run this contraption through a table saw. So it's good to go. Good to go. So that gives me those perfectly straight lines I'm looking for on the edge of the tabletop. And if I didn't mention it earlier, I'm not running just a sheet of plywood through the saw for fun. I've actually got a little runner on it so that it sits in the miter slot, so it's nice and safe. But enough with that, let's get back to the project. With those edges nice and straight, I need to round off the corners. And to do that, I'm gonna flip my planer out of the way and lock in my sander. Oh, and if you want to see how this was built or make one for yourself, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below. After finalizing the shape, I could throw out that paper template, then head over to my router table where I put in this massive 60 degree chamfer bit. Safety tip here, make sure to turn that speed on your router way down if you're ever using a bit this large. Also, take multiple passes when going to the full depth since this bit removes so much material. With that under bevel put on the bottom side of the table, I also wanted to smooth out the top side, so I swapped out that massive chamfer bit for a smaller round upper bit. This one isn't quite as scary to use. So that's gonna do it for making this crazy tabletop. Now, if you thought that this was kind of weird, wait until you see how I'm gonna make this base. I'll start off by ripping clean edges on my leftover stock from before. And yes, I know, I need to make a zero clearance insert for my table saw, but that's coming in a future video. The plans for this project tell me to mark out the starting point of the taper and the stopping point of the taper. Now I can grab that plywood sled from earlier, line up the cut marks of the taper to the edge of that plywood, clamp the piece down, and then screw in some support blocks. A quick pass through the table saw gets me a perfectly tapered leg. Once one of those tapered legs is cut, I can flip the cutoff piece 180 degrees, attach it back to the sled, and get another perfectly tapered leg that matches the other one. Now, while you absolutely could use this whole sled deal to make that next cut on these legs, I'm actually gonna change things up just a little bit and show you another tactic. 
So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use my miter gauge. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it into my saw here, and then I'm gonna adjust the angle on the back to the angle that's on the planes. The last cut that I need to do on these legs is create a really, really steep miter so that the legs can join together like this. Now, it's important to note that the miters on these legs actually need to be mirrored so that these pieces can meet up together properly. So one piece is cut on the left side of the blade and the other is cut on the right side. So now that I've got these two legs cut, I'm gonna start cutting all of the other ones. And they're really no different. So instead of me explaining all the same stuff over again, let's just cue some music. Ooh, no, 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 not that song. Eh, that one's better. There we go, let's use that one. While I'm finishing up those other pieces on the base, I want to take a quick second to thank all of my Patreon supporters who are truly making unsponsored videos like this possible. Each month, those supporters get a gift card to my online store valued at twice their donation amount, in addition to things like stickers, coffee mugs, t-shirts, and sweatshirts. And if you would like to support me in my journey to quit my day job and take this channel full time, consider checking out all those rewards that I have over for you on Patreon. And I know that I say it in every single video, but I'm serious. Please do not feel pressured. And to everybody else who just simply watches these videos, your support does not go unnoticed. I would not be doing any of this if it weren't for the amazing community out there, so truly, I thank you. I'm gonna start the assembly portion of this build by blooming up the miters that are gonna make the top and the bottom of that base. So the glue for the pieces that are gonna make the top and the bottom of the base are all done. Now, miter joints like this aren't typically the strongest, so we need to reinforce them. And while I could have done something like dowels or dominoes inside here, I really wanna try something different and that's gonna be making some splines. Now about a week ago, I made a video about how to make this jig so that you can make splines. And if you wanna check that out, click that link up here or look down in the description below. But I'm gonna make some splines and I'm actually gonna make them contrasting with maple just so it looks a little bit more interesting. So let's start that. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have a full video about how to make this jig and the whole process behind making splines, but I wanted to briefly touch on some of those points here. I'm first going to make a perpendicular cut through the joint. Then I'll rip down some thin strips of hardwood that'll fit perfectly inside that cut. After spreading a little bit of glue inside that cut, I can insert my spline. This glue needs to set up for just a couple hours, and then I can come back and cut off the excess wood. <laughs> you know something? You suck. Now, since I'm really bad at using hand tools, I don't really like them a lot, so I decided to jump over on the bandsaw to cut off all the excess. <laughs> Once 
Once all that excess was cut off, I transformed my flip top tool cart into sanding mode and smoothed everything out. The rest of the joints for this project pretty much follow the exact same process, so I'm just going to let some music play. So I typically edit these videos to make it look like I know what I'm doing, but I really couldn't pass up this opportunity to show you what it's really like in this garage. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of confusion and a lot of trial and error. Figured out. There you go. And now to attach that base to the tabletop, I'm gonna use something called a figure eight fastener. Now I think that these are one of the easiest way to attach tabletops to bases to account for wood movement. So let me show you how easy they are to install. I grabbed a three quarter inch Forstner bit and wore just out a small spot for these figure eight fasteners to sit in. And you might be able to notice that there's a little bit of restriction of the movement. So I need to knock out these edges right here. Now with my wide array of hand tool expertise, I recommend that you find the dullest, cheapest, and rustiest chisel you can possibly find to do this work. Now you can see that figure eight fastener has a lot more room to move. Flawless hand tool work, Eric. So I've got everything sanded up to 220 and I'm now ready to apply some finish. Now I typically use either an oil-based polyurethane or a water-based polyurethane and while they do offer a lot of protection, they require a lot of effort to apply because you have to put so many coats, wait for all those coats to dry, sand in between them, and it's just a lot of work. Not to mention, some film finishes out there require you to wear a respirator because they're filled with tons of toxic chemicals. Now, because my whole goal is to make more and more projects to show here on YouTube and everything, I'm actually trying a different finish out. I want basically a one and done finish. And for that, I'm trying out this new Walrus Oil Furniture Butter. It's very similar to some other hard wax products that you've probably heard of before. So let's try it out and see how it works. This stuff is incredibly easy to apply with just a shop towel. You wipe on a liberal coat, let it sit for about a day, come back and wipe off all the excess and you're done. No brushes, no brush marks, no streaks, no nonsense. For me, since I don't have a ton of experience, almost every single project that I build is centered around learning and trying out a new technique. These splines are definitely not perfect. However, I now feel like I have the confidence to try this on another project without worrying about if I'm gonna actually know how to do them. And even though this table doesn't look very strong, actually, let's test out how strong it is.
I'd say that's sufficient. Now, quit standing around and check out one of my other videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh.